nice paper in uh, 2005, I think, by Fitchu and colleagues where they talked about all this stuff, but they couldn't come up with the, the explanation of how the larvae got to the beach. So um, before I get into this, let me just give a quick story. I'll tell you how this work came about. So Ernst Peebles, I don't see him here today, but one day he literally brought into my office a bucket of water. And he placed it on the floor by my desk, reached his hand in, and out came this guy here. Uh, and he said, I just found this um, at the shore by Mullet Key, which is right here. And then he reached his hand down again, and he picked up a piece of macroalgae, and he said, the juvenile was co-located with this macroalgae of hard bottom offshore origin. So we had been talking about this a little before, so I knew the answer. And uh, it took a while to write the paper. This was 2007, because while the model we were running at the time gave the answer, I didn't feel like I could, I could defend that model well enough for some technical reasons. So it took a while to get a model fashion that I felt I could defend, and, and then we wrote the paper. So um, uh, it's a kind of a nice example of how collaborations ought to evolve. You know, a biologist brings a bucket of water, and a physicist uh, explains it. And, and actually, John explains a lot of biology to me, so I'm just being glib. But anyway, um, here's the Madison Swanson uh, uh, protected zone, steamboat lumps, Florida middle grounds, and so it's thought that these gags spawn up here somewhere. And they might spawn down here too, but this is about the isobath, the shelf break. <coughs> and um, we have moorings here, here, and here at the time. This is where the, the juveniles were, were found. So um, so Ernst uh, found his buddy at Mullet Key, and uh, this, this guy had a number of uh, friends that were um, around kind of the middle of, towards the end of May, where the, the most, most uh, juveniles were picked up at the beach. And so the story is kind of similar. I mean, it's I'm like a broken record here. It's, the, it's an uprolling story. And so this happens to be 2007, April 4th, May 2nd. The loop current has shed an eddy. It's banging up over here. You see a relative high propagating along the shelf slope. Southward geostrophic current on the shelf itself uh, in April, again in, in May. <coughs> These guys uh, spawn. Actually, they're really girls, but they spawn. Actually, the guys are girls. I, I learned a lot of interesting things about biology. You know? And so uh, it's kind of weird. But anyway, um, uh, they spawn in the late winter, early spring. And, and from previous studies, it's thought that it takes about a month and a half or so for the, the juveniles actually to get to the beach. So um, what we did is, oops. Oh, yeah. Again, we have data so we can check and see if the model simulation worked. The model simulation didn't work. Don't use the model. If the model simulation worked, you can use the model. So here's uh, mooring C18. It was on about the 75 meter isobath near the dry tortugas, just northwest of the dry tortugas. Here's an observation. Uh, here's a model simulation. Observation near the bottom, model simulation. So this period of time <coughs> that we needed to worry about from the end of March through uh, I guess towards the end of May, um, the currents were going in the right direction. And so we were able to use our model to simulate where the gag juveniles might have gone. So this is the model simulation uh, averaged over the <coughs> month of April 2007, month of May 2007, and so you see this nice, and this is bottom currents. You see this nice upwelling circulation uh, averaged over May, uh, towards the uh, average over April, 
Towards the end of May, the currents reversed, but near the, near the beach, it was still upwelling oriented. And so we were able then to do a bunch of uh, particle trajectory tracking. These are 45-day surface trajectories, initialized on April 7th at the 40, 60, 80, 100 meter isobath. So 40, 60, 80, 100. And you can see that over that 45-day period at the surface, none of these particles gained any proximity to the shoreline. And so we reject a surface hypothesis. And then we um, <coughs> repeat that experiment, but now we put particles near the bottom. And all of those particles made uh, progress towards the beach, and some of them even wound up right where Ernst picked up his little friend on Mullet Key. And there's nothing really special about April 7th, um, except that corresponds the best with when Ernst found the juveniles at Mullet Key. But if we repeat this, this experiment throughout the month of April, we get the same result. And so um, the mode of transport of gag larvae and juveniles from offshore spawning to the beach is via the bottom Ekman layer in an upwelling circulation. And um, that's consistent with the co-location of the juveniles with macroalgae of deep water, hard bottom origin. And in the paper, we also discuss some um, geochemical uh, evidence that further supports this. Um, so quite literally, these, these juveniles, they, they, they glom onto a piece of lettuce and literally surf to the beach in the bottom Ekman layer. OK, so some conclusions. Um, the main point is ecology is not biology. It's the sum total of all the processes that are responsible for an organism to make a living. And those organisms are no different than you and me. And um, as I said, I make a living, but the only thing I know about biology is how to fillet a fish. So there are other things that go into my ability to make a living, just as there are other things that go into Karenia brevis's ability to make a living and Gag Grouper's ability to make a living. And the sooner we adapt our science strategy to accommodate this fact, the sooner we will better understand our coastal ocean living marine resources and become better environmental stewards of this uh, region, the coastal ocean, where society meets the sea. So I'll try to take any questions you might have, and uh, thanks.